name is Kim Shea with Aging Purposefully, and today I'm here with Anita Bennett from Sunset Candy. And the purpose of Aging Purposefully is to try and inspire you with people who are aging in a way that I think you'll find interesting and hopefully give you some ideas about things that you might be able to do for yourself as you go through the second half and hopefully the best half of your life. So, Anita, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. much, and thank you for the delicious tea. You're welcome, you're welcome. We're drinking some rose petal tea, and Anita has brought some of her beautiful candy, some lemon bark, and some peanut brittle. And I'm gonna try a little piece now, good. since you said it's good with tea. <laughs> oh, that is really nice. Thank you. That is really, really nice. Mm. It's not too sweet, it's just perfect. It's a white chocolate and lemon. It's yummy. That's all that's in it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is um, this is some of your Newport almond toffee, mm -hmm. and so you make candy for for businesses primarily. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're mostly business to business. We do have some other customers, but mostly it's business to business, and um, uh, we can add custom labels and do different sizes and things like that. Just really customize their order so it's perfect for them. That's, that's such a neat mm -hmm. thing that you have come up with. Thank you. So now you have not been doing this. You're, you have not been doing this business your whole life. No. What were you doing before you did this? Well, I started out as an administrative assistant and uh, at a college and, um, and then moved from there to, uh, to business. And I worked as administrative assistant or executive assistant type positions for my whole career. And then why did you leave your career as an executive? Well, I got laid off. You got laid yeah, off. Yeah, I okay. hate to talk about that, but I did get, I got laid off when I turned 60. And so I'm not sure why, but um, I, but that happened. And so I ha already had it in my mind that um, I was already thinking of doing something else because I wasn't passionate about the administrative mm. um, uh, professional jobs. And I always got bored, and I moved around a lot because I got bored. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, maybe I can find something that I really love to do. And so I had already started a business plan and started researching doing my own candy business. And had you ever made candy before? Or was oh, this? yeah. Okay. Candy is something that I grew up making. Mm -hmm. And I just love to make candy, especially this toffee, and uh, cookies and baked goods, and then wrap them up real pretty and give them away as gifts. That was always a neat thing. So I, <clears throat> I started off when I was a kid doing that and then um, continued pretty much through my entire life. But sometimes you just get too busy and you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's how we, I came up with the idea for this because as an administrative professional, sometimes I went out to look for candy or a special gift. And I couldn't find anything that was truly special, like mm. what I had given to people. So, um, so I decided to start this company to offer other companies the, um, the option to do this. That is really inspiring because you've taken something that it was maybe a hobby or an art form for you, and then you've turned your passion into this business. It wasn't really a hobby. I just loved to do it. Mm. But I didn't realize it was a passion until I started doing it. And then I started uh, this company and making the candy and I could care less about um, the marketing and that part of it. Mm -hmm. I love being in the kitchen. I'm so passionate about that. I can do that every day. I don't get bored. I try different recipes and make our candy and package it up and it just, um, it just you can tell it's a yeah it's my passion yeah uh -huh. I know it comes through uh -huh. it really comes through so somebody has to do some of the marketing because I mean you have to get right. out there so is that something you have forced yourself yes. to do mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah I I feel that um, my um, I don't know I just get nervous and upset and not upset I guess but anxious about going out and speaking to people and standing up in front of people mm -hmm. and just the whole marketing thing. And I just feel like you just have to face your fears and move out of your comfort zone to grow. And uh, the business is important to me. 
and I want to continue mm -hmm. my passion of making the toffee, and so I have to do that. And it gets easier as you go along. Okay, so I was, well, was going to ask mm -hmm. you, so it is getting easier for you? Yeah, yeah. somewhat. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I still have a ways to go. <laughs> well, I mean, they even say entertainers will still say they get stage fright after doing it for decades. Oh, don't tell it's me just, that. I'm <laughs> just a little bit. And then I was reading a book by somebody the other day, and they were saying, that they are trying to reframe it so that it's not nervousness, it's excitement. So to try and tell yourself, I'm just excited. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm excited about what I'm mm -hmm. going to do next, and I'm feeling excitement, not mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. Because it is kind of exciting. Every time you go out there and market something, who knows what's going to right, come from it. Right, right. Yeah. But I find that um, before I would um, go to any kind of a meeting or, or know that I was going to be talking to people, I'd practice over and over and over again for sometimes days yeah. what am I going to say and then now I just go I just do it I mm -hmm. still mess up sometimes and say the wrong thing or say it backwards or whatever but I don't it doesn't bother me as much I mean we're all human yeah so exactly it doesn't bother me as much as it used and I'm to. sure you're not being judged as much as you might think you are I Nobody, hope not I don't think so <laughs> I've never heard you say anything wrong <laughs> So what advice would you have for somebody who is in your situation, and it is a very common situation nowadays for somebody 50 and older to be laid off from their job, and then they are trying to figure out, now what do I do? So it sounds like one of the things you can do is go in and figure out what it is that you do enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but then how do you make that a reality? Like you said you made a business plan. Do you research what what the odds are of your success, how did you go forward? I think it depends how much you know about what you want to do in the first place. What I did is I came up with a couple of different ideas, maybe five different ideas, because I knew I wanted to do something. I was tired of working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I knew it would be difficult to find another job doing what I was doing. And so I had a couple of different ideas, and I asked professionals especially I had a financial advisor. Mm. I didn't have a lot of money, but what I had, he, he had, and I really trusted him. And I asked people, what do you think would be the best um, step for me to take, this or this or this? Mm -hmm. And so people had already always told me I should start a business with the candy, mm. but there's a lot of other regulations and things that you have to do when you're working with a food product. So that was um, something I had to think about. But I finally decided to do the candy, mm -hmm. and, um, and it worked out really well. So when I did that, I researched everything. I really tried to do my due diligence, and I looked on um, uh, YouTube, and I talked to people, and you know, talked to the health department, and farmers markets, and kitchens, and just everybody. And still I was surprised at things that came up when I started the company. Mm. I thought I had it all, and I didn't, <laughs> yeah. and I still don't. But um, So what I would suggest to somebody, if they have something and they think that it's really a good, um, a good idea and it's something that they are interested in, to try it. And to step out, it, for me, I had to, like I said, step out of my comfort zone and do all these things. And... Um, it really helps you grow, and I'm happy that I did that now mm -hmm. because now my comfort zone's here, and so I'm trying to step here. Yeah. Instead, I'm still trying to do that, yeah. and and it's it really makes you feel good inside, and um, you need to be fearless in a way, even though I don't consider myself fearless, but in some instances you do, mm -hmm. and I just um, look at what I've done and I say, what could happen if it doesn't work out? Well, it's not the end of the world, mm -hmm. and so why not take those chances? And that's um, what I would tell somebody is, why not take a chance on your idea? And just go for it. I don't know if that kind of was the long way around an answer to what you asked. No, but, but it's you, you took us through the thought process, which mm -hmm. I think is important. And I think uh, you also mentioned that you had been working on a business plan before you actually were laid off. Right. Or maybe you mentioned that to me off camera. but um, And so maybe that would be an idea for somebody who isn't in the position yet of being mm -hmm. laid off, but they could start working on these ideas. So maybe as you're approaching 50, you start thinking about what, what are some things I could do in the event this happens? Mm -hmm. 
or just because you want to, just mm-hmm. because you want to do something completely different once your kids are grown and you've got the freedom to maybe right. do something different, you could reinvent yourself. And some people know way back what they love and what they w- would like to do. Mm-hmm. I really do. And, um, and so, but the time isn't right. And so you just have to, I, I don't know if waiting is the right word, but the time has to be right to, mm-hmm. to jump into it. Yeah. And um, for me, it, the time wasn't right early, and I didn't know I had this passion, and then it just kind of came along. And I thought, you know, when I first started, I thought, oh, I can't do this, I'm going to have to quit. Mm-hmm. And somehow, things just keep moving along. Yeah. I don't know, it's just um, the universe or whatever, it just keeps moving along. I think, oh, yeah, and then I, you know... Uh, just move along with it. It sounds like you're in the right zone. I, I you're think in the right so. lane anyway mm-hmm. because everything's going well. Mm-hmm. And even when you have challenges, you know, you try and find a way around it. So We always have challenges. Yes. And I think any time, especially if you're in business for yourself or you're trying to uh, work with your passion, you're going to have challenges. You have the really good times and it's all worthwhile, but there can be major challenges. And you just, once you get over those and you stick with it and you keep going, Usually, I found that after the worst, the best comes, mm. and so there might be a whole mountain, and then it's, you know, it, it's just wonderful afterwards. Yeah. And so, um, uh, I feel that if you're working your passion, you stick with it, you um, you face your challenges, everything kind of works out mm-hmm. somehow, and I don't know how that works, but it does. It's good though. <laughs> it's yeah, good it is. I'm it. glad it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, whenever I interview people, I like to think about boxes that they're ticking off that they're doing right to age well. And so, with you, Anita, I see that you are creative. So you're using your your left side of your brain. You're also using your right side of your brain because you're running a business and there's a lot of just uh, logistical stuff you have to deal with. And you're allowing yourself to express yourself artistically with the candy and I know you like to experiment and come up Mm -hmm. with new combinations and things like that you're also getting out there and meeting people and you're you're talking to people so you're forcing yourself to take some challenges on but you're also just building a community and a network of people Mm -hmm. which is really good Mm -hmm. for you and you're doing something that you love it's fun yeah I'm also taking I've had to um, educate myself and so I went to school and became a certified chocolatier as part of it. And I'm starting another class in food safety um, on Monday. So, um, so that's part of it too. And um, just making sure um, I, nobody knows everything about anything. Mm-hmm. And so just keeping that um, education going and the learning process going, you can always improve. Uh, your product and yourself Mm -hmm. and so uh, I'm trying to do that through education well I think you are so I think I think you're very inspiring I really do and so uh, thank you for coming for tea thank you for having me thank you and for sharing your story with everybody Mm -hmm. and so once again I'm Kim Shea with Aging Purposefully and this is Anita Bennett with Sunset Bay Candy and I will put her information below the video in case you'd like to contact her if you have a need for some business candy that that she packages up really nicely and customizes so you can send that out and just please keep something like this in mind if you're going through the same experience or you think that might be coming down the line for you this might be something you can do just reinvent yourself and start over thank you very much